How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern with me, Andrew Zarian. I am sick. I am battling pneumonia. I had an upper respiratory infection. I have a sinus infection. I, I was down for the count all week long, but I kicked out at almost three. And I'm here with you guys today. A lot to talk about. Full gear fall out. A lot happened on the show, man. A ton happened on the show. Very much. I, I, I very much enjoyed the show. I have to tell you, I, I watched 99% of it live. And then I just I went back this morning just to see the stuff that I kind of was in and out in my in my uh in my in my medicated uh, uh delusional dreams last night. I had to just take a bunch of my medicine and just knock myself out. I, I felt terrible. But, you know, I did watch a lot of the show. I thought it was fantastic. I, I you know, I enjoy all the AEW shows. Uh, I, I generally don't have too much of a problem with them. They, they're, this was a solid show. Very long show. But it was a solid, solid show. We're going to be doing a rundown of everything that happened on the show. Mostly today on the show. Because... You know, big story, big things coming out of here, and, and it's going to be leading AEW into 2023, which is a very important year for them. Big contract year coming up for AEW. They they corrected a lot of, lot of the wrongs over the last couple of months that we've seen in this company where, where post-CM Punk, MJF, the new world's heavyweight champion in this company, Kenny and the Bucks are back, doing a best out of seven series for the trios titles. Curious if that's going to go back and forth, but we have a ton to talk about today, including joining me, Matt Ryan, my co-host tonight on the show. But when we come back, we're going right into full gear and everything that happened on that show. Wrestling Observer Live, stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition, Andrew Zarian here, a very sick Andrew. But thank God for my co-host today, Matt Ryan. How you doing, Hello. Matt? I'm, do, I'm doing. I'm doing better than you, pal. Oh, dude, you, that, you've, been, you've known how bad it's not this fair. Has been all week. Yeah, we've been we've been talking. We we text frequently. We actually do like each other outside the show. It's a, it's not as parasocial of a parasocial relationship as many would think. But they, yeah, you uh, you've been through the ringer. Um, I had to be around seventeen or so thousand human beings last night inside the Prudential Center. That was a happening. Um, about, about thirteen thousand. About thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. Okay, thirteen thousand. It felt like seventeen. What is this? 000. WWE math? <laughs> no, man. I, I didn't I, know uh, what the count. I didn't know what the count was. It I, it it felt and seemed very full last night. You know, I um, I got to tell you, I I have. It, it's been a brutal week. I, I mentioned the potato way too many times over the last couple of weeks. The potato story. Where now it, they it, pie this. They're in front of my building, Zarian. There the are potatoes. potatoes. In front of my building, ever since I got hired by you Fakakta people. I'm telling you, man. Just, I, I have been, it's the same things that I, the same thing that I had in 2019. I have pneumonia. Yeah, you've got barfly voice going chest, real it, good right now. Really, I, I, it's terrible for radio, but I'm trying my best here, guys. And I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to try to keep it together here. But great show last night. I loved, I, yeah. I, I loved watching it. Now, you were in that building. So you I have was. a very different First time. perspective. Yeah, first time I was there for an AEW pay-per-view. First time I've been to a major event in the stands since, well, I was at, at, at the United Center for when Punk came back. But for, for just being in the audience, it was a great feeling. It was a great crowd. The crowd was hot, A lot hot, of energetic right? people. Yeah, the crowd was hot. There were moments where the crowd would dip, but it was a five-hour show, including the pre-show. So I missed the first pre-show match, but I was there for the rest of the card. And the crowd felt into it. The crowd loved almost everybody on that card with limited exceptions. Um, you can take your guess. You probably heard the ones they didn't like. Uh, but it was probably bell to bell one of the best AEW shows I've watched. And I've watched a fair amount of AEW. I think I've watched almost every pay-per-view they've put out in one way or another and for me, it felt like they were course correcting. They had a very rough second half of the year. They really found their footing. The finish of the main event is going to be talked about in that company for a long time. Even though they telegraphed it. 
it felt. I don't know if you felt the same way. Uh, I know you and Rich talked about last night on Matt Men earlier today, and shout out to Rich and everybody over at Matt Men. But that finish, it felt telegraphed. It felt like I saw, I saw it coming. I had conversations with some people in some places, and that was kind of what I thought was going to happen. And when it happened, I was like, yeah. that there, there were three different roads it can go down. There was one road where Max remains a baby face that didn't make sense to me. The other one involved the firm getting involved, which they kind of— I'm kinda, so glad they th- didn't. Yeah. I'm it, so it glad needed to be that. Yeah, it needed so, to be that. So let's go down this card, man. Uh, yeah. You know, I, the, most most of the show is going to be AEW. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are going to be happy about that because I get yelled at, but I don't balance things out. You're but, on the take from the WWE, bro. I, you know, I can't be on the take for both. I can't. <laughs> Why be not? The, I can maybe How can I am. You, why not? How is that not? how is that not a problem? It's <laughs> we live we live in a society, a capitalistic society. We do live in a society. Keep getting them checks. We do if live global in a wrestling, if Herb Abrams' ghost is sending you checks in 2022, I am not begrudging you. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that check. Well maybe <laughs> Herb is paying you in something else. We'll find out. It'd be covered in baby oil either. It'd way. be covered in baby oil and like white substance. I don't know what's going on. Um <laughs> Let's talk about this. Uh, Zero Hour. They had three matches on this card. Three solid matches. I enjoyed all of them. A lot of fun. Opening match. Orange Cassidy, Trent Beretta, Chuck Taylor. Friend of the show, Matt Men, uh, Rocky Romero. And an evil Danhausen. The feet of QT Marshall, Aaron Solo, Nick Camarado, Lee Johnson, and Cole Carter. Uh, The story here was Danhausen coming at the end as evil Danhausen. He had a bag of teeth. I... Love that spot. I'm a big Dan Housen fan. Teeth? I very much enjoy wait, wait, wait. Where does he get teeth? Where else do you go? At the Teeth Emporium. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, in yeah, Fort Lee, dude. Emporium. It's next to the Jewelry Emporium in Fort Lee. <laughs> They're in Jersey. It's right there. The Tooth Emporium. The, and then you got the Furniture Expo. And there's a Food and, Emporium. Yeah, you got the Food Emporium. Uh, all the Emporiums are in Fort Lee. Uh, I thought right, this was fun. You know, crowd popped for uh, for Dan Housen coming in. No, no funny yeah. stuff. Just evil. Uh, very cool, fun opener. Next was Ricky Starks defeating Brian Cage with Prince Nana. Prince Nana being on, on television in 2022 it's is fascinating so, to me. It's so, so weird. We- it's weird, so weird in a good way. In a good way, yeah. No, no negative like, against him. Yeah. Uh, like Ricky I've Starks- worked shows at the Elks Lodge with him, and now he's <laughs> no. on pay-per-view. Listen, what is that? Listen, maybe it's time for Matthew Ryan Shapiro to make a comeback. Oh, he died in a unicycle accident. You know what's funny? I get stopped every now and then. There's this one drunk in my neighborhood <laughs> that sees me. I, I swear to God, this is this is not even like I'm not being funny for the radio. He looks at me and he goes, Matthew Ryan Shapiro. And he says like a bunch of expletives that I can't say on the radio. But he like he's like this drunk guy that he just looks at me, starts screaming Matthew Ryan Shapiro and starts cutting your promos from like 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I left a mark and at least one person. At least one guy. One person. I, you, I, this is a true story. The first time I met Matt, this guy tried to pitch me investing like $50,000 into his wrestling company. I'm not even exaggerating here, okay? This is a true story. I'm uh, breaking kayfabe. First time I met Matt, I appreciate it because it was so ballsy of a thing to do. We're I sitting thought at you this were rich. Board. You know, not that rich. <laughs> Sorry, you look pretty. Like I just assume pretty, all rich that... people are pretty. Look at me. I look like an assistant goalie coach for a D four college. I mean, kind of a little. That's very true, actually. Very true. Uh, so we're like sitting, we're having this conversation, and this drunk guy at the end of the bar, looking, looking, and he's doing one of these. And he's like, "I know you. I know you." Screaming at Matt, and Matt's like, "Like, hey, I don't know. Maybe I know." He's like, "I'm from New York, whatever." And he goes, "Matthew Riot," and he's throat and then he starts screaming anti-semitic remarks at you at the end of the yeah. bar and i look at you i'm like Not great i'm like listen i can't help what what's around and we went to another bar yeah i, I that is a real that is a that real is an actual thing that happened. that is an actual thing that happened i i i can't even make that up i i've never experienced you, anything like that you know what's weirder the fact that eddie kingston wrestled jun akiyama on a pre-show Dude, not in a bad way. I know. Not in a bad way. Like not in a bad I, way. I want to. I want to recontextualize the idea of a pre-show to people, because its its job is to sell you on the pay-per-view. If they're willing to give you that match for free 
imagine what you're going to get for the 40 buck investment or the $10 on Peacock. You know what? That's a great, like, that's a great way of putting it, right? Like that's on a pre-show. That's gotta, Look what's going to be on the yeah. main show. Yeah. I think that's the way, that's a smart way of going about it. You know, the WWE has done that in the past and it's gotten a ton of negative sentiment. I, I feel like people cape for people and it's because of their own perception of things and they feel like they're offended so everybody should be offended and if you're rooting for someone to get a higher spot on the card and you're a def- true fan of them god god bless you i'm not begrudging you of that yeah but you have to take a look at the totality of the industry and where all of these things fit and also full gear was a four-hour pay-per-view very long the fact Eddie they were King- able to fit three matches in an hour is yeah. Eddie Kingston defeated Jun- Junakiyama in a in a you know very hard hitting match. It was an all Japan yeah. style match. It was right up Eddie's alley. You know he was genuinely very emotional in tears. He did a big thank you at the end, hyping up the show. I, I yeah. you know good for Eddie man. I, I know that he he hurt his shoulder. It looked like it. Looked like he banged up his shoulder. A little, but you you can't be anything but happy for this guy. Uh, and yeah. good for Tony for giving him this match. You know, it just showed that both mutual respect for each other. You know, having a guy like Jun Akiyama on the card for Eddie Kingston in a pre-show match. Uh, very much love this. But, you know, and you're going into this and you're saying, this is, this is what we had on the pre-show. This is how we end the yeah. pre-show. How are we going? What's going to happen on the main card? You know, they a lot went on on this main with card. A cage match. They, so... They start off the card with a cage match. We're going to go to a break, but when we come back, yeah. we're going right into this main card. I want to know, I want to hear from you guys. What did you think of this show? What did you think of everything? Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. We'll be right back after Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Andrew Zarian here for a Sunday edition of the show, joined by Matt Ryan, my co-host for the Hello. evening. Going into the main card of Full Gear, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, Luchasaurus, Steel Cage match. What did you think of this match? I thought it was an awesome match. Um, I didn't like the fact they went outside of the cage, but that's just me being an old man Dude. about wrestling. Dude, I'm going to tell you, I, I had no problem. I don't have a problem with going outside. I have a problem I... when there is no purpose to outside, right? Like, I, yeah. the, the purpose of the cage is to keep you in there. And to keep everybody out. If it's yes. as easy as a one-armed man to come in, grab, steal the keys from the ref, open the door, and the, then leave. I liked the spot. I liked the steal, the the pickpocketing. I liked all of that. And I feel like they should have not fought outside the cage. And you saw a lot of tribute spots. Like they did Deshaun and Taker from Hell in a Cell 1. They did but they the didn't sit-ups. get the camera. But they didn't get the camera angle. No. You could have done that, that from the I, inside well, with the was, outside camera. Yeah, yeah. They did I, the sit-ups. That that was cool. And weirdly enough, Perry, Jack Perry did the mankind elbow off of the top, just a few miles down the road from where Foley did it against Hunter in SummerSlam '97, where I also was at. So, pretty Very good quality cage matches in my in my attendance career. I thought it was a great career. cage. I thought it was a fantastic cage match. It was really match. good. Yeah, it was the best I've seen both of those guys. I think he ended up winning, especially as singles. Yeah, uh, he ended up winning with an elbow off the top into yeah. a bear trap, and Luchasaurus tapped. So I'm curious where they go from this point on. Uh, do you continue this? Do you separate them? What? How? Where do they go? That's my question here. And what do you do with Jungle Boy? You know, like I think he kind of stalled out a little bit, but this may have mm-hmm. propelled him back into a better yeah. position. I think I think you kind of keep him off TV for a while, and then he you comes let back. Christian heal up, and then you lead up to Revolution and that blow off. If they're going to keep him going, they need to give him someone to work with, a vet, maybe get him involved with the ROH title scene. But even that's a little wonky. Yeah, there's no place for him in the TNT title scene. We'll get into that in the All Atlantic title. Yeah, that triangle, the Elite. You had Pac, Pentel Zero, and Ray Phoenix against Kenny and the Buck Boys, Nick and Matt. Uh, with Don Cows, by the way. I, Lance, I know Lance is listening to this. 
He needs to ask oh Don for me. I need a huge favor, Lance. Ask Don Cows where he got those loafers. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Beautiful loafers on Don Callis. His loafer game, man, 10 out of 10. I tweeted this. Yeah. Very impressed. Uh, man, man's got the Gucci slippers on and looking love clean. Lo love it. Uh, I thought this was a remarkable match. What a fantastic I, yeah. trios match. Great. I mean, the bar is set so high for this title with, with, with matches like this. I don't know how, in the long term, how you're going to be able to maintain this style of match. But they're doing a the best out of seven here. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do that at, at most six more times. How do you do it? Every we'll week. We'll find out. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Um, the entrance uh, oh, live was so fun. And it it was cool. Like, everything with, you know, everything notwithstanding of what's going on involving the personalities, um, all the Michigas going on with AEW, they delivered with that return and they gave them the entrance that really reestablished them. And the smart thing with the finish of Ray Phoenix finally using the bell hammer and just showing that turn to the dark side, it, you needed to establish who was good and who was evil here because they were going to root for both sides no matter what in that match. But you needed that to establish the rest of the story. And I'm excited to see how they follow it up the next six weeks. Yeah, I, I mean, do you have the title go back and forth between these guys? Well, they did, did they explain whether or not the title is on the line for, or whoever wins the best of seven keeps gets maybe, the belt? Maybe our producer Matt knows. MG yeah. might know. I, 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 you know, I was still in a daze of cold medicine when I was watching this. <laughs> still uh, not feeling 100%. So at some point you thought it was Anthony Naraka wrestling in there. You were so Dude, next thing I know, balls. next thing I know, uh, you know, Jeff Jarrett's winning the world title. I don't know what happened on the show. <laughs> It was, it was a weird night for me. But I, I Kenny looks remarkable, by the way. Jacked, yeah. big dude. Man, he looks uh, unbelievable. And he was moving better than I've, I've seen him in a very long time. Yeah, Those Snapdragons are He needed that are, time off. Yeah, I think it was well-deserved, that time off. And maybe I think, you know, that the last couple of months might have been a, a blessing in disguise for the long term. We'll find out. Uh, obviously, uh, Kenny, Kenny eats the pin here, and this is going to continue on. Very much love this match. Uh, it, was, yeah, it was listen a lot of spots right and, and a lot of people complain yeah. about this but there was a nice balance of styles on this card and I didn't I wasn't bothered that this was such a high spot match it needed to be it you know and, and these guys went at a went a million miles an hour and it came out it looked really good very much loved it but there was also a story to it there were different elements to the match that gave it a cohesive it wasn't what people, you know, AEW multi-man matches at their worst, where it's like, there's it's whose line rules. That yeah. wasn't the case last night. And there was a psychology, there was a build, there were a lot of great things to it, and that was a great match. But well, we can move on. Story. You told the yeah. story of the older brothers and the younger brother. You know, like there was there was a lot of story being told uh, by the commentary, and commentary did a fantastic job. Yeah, Excalibur, like, unbelievably good. Yeah. <clears throat> More. Next, following Move this, we got, yep. we got Jade, Cargill, and Nyla Rose. The crowd slowed down for this one. It was a shorter match. Uh, you know, they both, It was very good. It was I, good. I, you I know was, what? For what it was, yeah. it was they didn't do anything wrong. They both came out looking strong. They both did their finishers on each other, uh, and, and Jade got the win, rightfully so. It was a Hasset fight in every way imaginable, coming out like She-Ra, and then Nyla coming out with the Eddie entrance... That was really cool. Lie, cheat, and steal. That was a really nice touch, and yeah. I, I like that a lot. Uh, it was cool for the house. Uh, Jade Cargill, every time, her Impressive. presentation, her, like, she's a star. There's no denying the fact that she is a star, and... If it's not MJF, Jade Cargill will be the first huge crossover star of homegrown AEW talent. Uh, I, I don't. I, how does she not become a star? I don't know. Uh, yeah. she has she has the look. She's improving tremendously in the ring. Uh, there's definitely growth happening all the time with her, unless she somehow and, stalls out, which I I can't see happening. She she will be. You know, we talk about bidding wars. Uh, I mean, how does WWE not look at her and say? Man, we need her. 
I know that there's interest. The, the, I've been I've been told the, that they they would you know if the opportunity was right they would be very much interested in her. The thing with that is if they brought Jade over and we got like ninety other things to get into. Where does she fit in in that card? Because there's so many top humans on the women's roster right now. And if Charlotte comes back, when Becky comes back, there's a lot of other rumors. Sure. And there's a logjam right now in those divisions. I think Jade Cargill's best move is to grow with AEW and just become undeniable. And but basically where do you become turn a TV star, Matt? Where do you become a big crossover TV star? Well, if you're Cody Rhodes, it was AEW. He got a reality show and a game show out. He of did it. actually. Yeah, you're right. He did get it. But like, I I feel like people disregard the Warner Media relationship and how valuable AEW is as a property. Not just because instead of a legacy drama or a reality show, the cost difference. Even though you're talking about media rights, the the week by week cost and the revenue that TV will bring in aside from a reality show. It's not, I don't think it's a fair fight, but also you have all this moldable clay that you can insert into and the Warner media people are smart and also they're fiscally, you know, they're, 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 they're looking to protect their bag as much as possible. And if they have that well to tap on, that's such a smart thing. Yeah. WWE did that with USA in the mid 2010s. You saw them on psych or every other show for a period of time. It's the best possible road for these guys. Yeah. Interesting. Following this, we got Chris Jericho, Claudio Castagnoli, Brian Danielson, and Sammy Guevara for the Ring of Honor World title. What did you think of this, man? I, I enjoyed it. How was the building um, for this? How was it live? The building was into it. The building was very much pro Blackpool Combat Club. Everybody sang Judas. I I have my feelings on that. He's a heel. I, I, I'm very old man about that. I really wish that it wasn't that, but I get it. I get it. Um... I think people were waiting to see Danielson win the belt. I was, I was on, I was on my hands and knees at one point playing, praying to the wrestling gods because Dan Brian Danielson being ROH champion meant a lot to me at a point in my life, and seeing that again would be awesome. But I don't know how the rest of this story is going to play out. Well, it's I don't know where of, they it's go. Play from. out of that Ring of Honor show. Yeah, and does it, Jericho it, it, drop it a final battle? Does he drop it to Danielson? And then you have a Danielson and Claudio feud. I don't, I, 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 you know, I'm very biased towards Danielson because I'm a big Danielson yeah. fan and I would love for him to have this title. I think he needs to be in the mix of the world championship at this point. I, I think it's absurd that we're not getting this, uh, but that's yeah. my own personal bias and I'd like to see him. But the big story of this match is the demise of the Blackpool Combat Club and a little bit of the demise of the Jericho Appreciation Society be between Sammy and Chris. Yeah, I, I like the tease for that. I don't think Sammy needs to be in the JAS anymore. The way it's constituted, I think that it did a lot of service, and I think we're seeing a lot of the stables and factions that popped up over the last year really coming apart, and I think that's a part of the pivot for AEW, and I think it's a smart pivot to a lot, allow a lot of these guys to stand on their own. We'll obviously see on Wednesday but, Andrew, when we come back, we got a whole other half of a card to go through. And I'm really excited to talk about the TNT title match. Obviously, MJF and John Moxley, the tag title match. Holy smokes, the pop for the acclaimed inside the building. Anthony Bowen's coming home. And MJF getting over. Oh, Big time. Insanity. Big time. And Soraya. We got to talk about yeah, that Soraya match. Coming wanna, yeah, yeah Soraya coming back from injury after five years. So, a lot to talk about still on the show. Guys, obviously, send me your input. Tweet me, at Andrew Zarian. I want to know what you're thinking of this show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. Here with Matt Ryan talking. Hello. AEW Full Gear. We had Soraya and Britt mm -hmm. Baker. Soraya's first match in five years. Now, the big story here was they did that injury spot uh, in the beginning of the match, very similar to what they did with Danielson, uh, where, you know, they 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 kind of sold this neck injury. I felt that the... Uh, you, you were in the building, Matt. The, yeah. Looking at it on TV, people were into this. Uh, you know, they wanted, they wanted this match. It was a lot of back and forth. Britt Baker, obviously, is the heel here, but... They, they were che cheering for her. They were cheering for Soraya. They were booing both. 
But when they, when they started playing with the neck injury, I think it took something out of the audience. I th- I think that when it got wrestling shows are built on peaks and valleys. So you build to this point, you build to this point, and you come down. After what happened with the Jericho match and like all the stuff going on, like just you, the dip inevitably comes, and that that was over an hour and a half or almost two hours into a four hour show. So that's a bit of a heat spot to be like dead center in the middle of the card. And you're a, you're an angle that carries a lot of weight. You're the most important storyline in your division that doesn't have to do with the title. So it's got to feel like a main event, but you're on this card with so many big matches and you've got this story in there and this means so much. There's a lot of things at stake and a lot of things. It's, it's putting 20 pounds in a 10 pound bag. Yes. They did a good job as they went along. And some of the risks they took, and it wasn't like huge risks, but the curb stomp spot, doing any of those spots to where we were trying to put, like any of those stuff, it was really interesting just to see the crowd react to it. It was awesome to see Soraya win and have that moment, but Britt Baker continues to prove why she's at the top of this division. Yeah. That was a great performance. Soraya and the scrum uh, pretty much said, like, it was a total joy to work with her and uh, total, I mean, she's a total superstar. And, and Britt Baker, obviously, it shows the pr- progress over the yeah. last three years uh, of Britt Baker's ability as, as a performer. I'm a big fan of hers. You know, I, I think she's Same. fantastic. Uh, I, I, the story of this match really was, what can Soraya do? And there's a lot of, yeah. a lot of eyeballs on her. It was a safe match. She didn't really go crazy in the match. I think it was fine. And, you know, you hear the stories of, you know, this person hasn't wrestled in this many years. This person hasn't uh, performed in a ring this many years. Soraya really did not have a lot of time to train. It wasn't like she was retired and she was still working in a ring. She she was told she can't. I know that, she, I, I believe in the scrim, she said that she was doing some stuff back home and she had worked out a little bit, but... She really didn't, she wasn't doing full-blown matches to train for this. So, you know, she admitted she was a little rusty, but that takes time. It, much like how CM Punk looked his first match with Darby Allen. You know, that CM Punk compared to like a, a couple of weeks later was very different. Yeah, you got to get your sea legs back. It's like you got to get it back, back at yeah. your regular job. Yeah. So it, I'm not putting like any, I, out again. like I'm not criticizing the match because I think no. she did fine. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you. Get you know, get a career injury? ending neck injury and then and then be told you can't work and then all of a sudden get cleared right before your match and try to put this together. You know what? Kudos to yeah, both you, of them. They they both you know, look you know, good. You know why you you that way, Andrew? Because you're a rational human being, and you can yeah. actually look at things for what they are and not whatever fakakta narrative you make up in your head because all you do is stare at a screen. We all stare at screens for money, but yeah. uh, I'm I'm trying to be nice. I, to I have I like to let things play out. Before yes. I give my critical input on it, I, a but, lot of then, things need but, to play out, and and you know, it's it's that saying, let it play out, let's see what happens, yeah. and then you criticize it. I'm gonna see what happens here. I'm gonna see what Soraya could do. You know, AEW needs someone like her for sure for the women's division to elevate Definitely. it a little bit more, and I think this match elevated Britt Baker more than anything else. Yeah, a lot of near then, falls though, which I was not crazy about. It felt very I, I, NXT 2013 main event to me. I think that was just trying to milk the emotion out of it. And when someone is conditioned to work that style and you're trying to create this will they, won't they win in their return match, I get the reasoning why. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of a million near falls. I like it when it matters. I like it when you give some oomph to it. But I'd cap. I like the rule of threes, but I'm also an old fuddy duddy who watched Georgia as soon as he got home yes, last night. I know so I, my I know opinions you. are valid to a point. <laughs> Following this, Ring of Honor TV Championship cha- champion Samoa Joe defeated Powerhouse Hobbs and Wardlow to win the TNT title. Powerhouse Hobbs took the pin. Uh, this was a big boy match, uh, and Joe looked Thick good. Powerhouse season, looked baby. good. Wardlow looked good. Uh, the story here now will be Joe and Wardlow possibly. For for all, take winner take all or for the ROH title at the pay per view, yeah. they're gonna do something here. I think they might merge the titles. I think that that might be the road ahead. I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. Depending on how things play out with ROH getting a TV deal, 
I still think that's very much in the running. I think that's very much something that's being talked about. I don't know where it's going to end up. I'm I'm not bullish on it being Warner Media, but it I could you know I'd be happily surprised. But you don't think you're not bullish on Warner Media. Interesting. No, I, I I go back and forth on it. I, I think they see the value, but also trying to find a spot for it in the midst of that schedule is very difficult for me unless it goes on max. But some, seeing Samoa Joe win a championship in, a, in an arena, coolest feeling for someone who's been a fan of Joe since high school. Yeah. So that was awesome. He was, still wearing, and and he was wearing the same pants that he wore when he yeah. wrestled in, in high school. So when you were in high school. so <laughs> Same exact one. Also, yeah. Shout out to Wardlow had his... I, I would say his best match as TNT champion. Yeah. Um, Powerhouse Hobbs proved that he belonged at the top level. I'd love to see them run it back. Anybody in that match could have won the belt, and I would have been happy, but I'm just happy that Samoa Joe won. And speaking of happy, Andrew, our next match features yeah. your favorite wrestler. And I agree. J E double F, J A double R, E double T. Wee woo, wee woo. That's right. Jeff uh. Jarrett and Jay Lethal against Darby Allen and Sting. This match was so fun watching it live. And having ADHD during this match made me lose my mind because it was like watching nine things at once. It was like <laughs> watching NBA League Pass or like the quad angle on like on the NFL Sunday ticket Dude, when watching Red you, Zone. I, I, so I watched this whole match and I just closed my eyes for like a second, right? I closed my eyes for a second because I was, I, I remember, I, I'm, I'm still sick. Yeah. And I thought it was a fever dream. I'm seeing, <laughs> I woke up, I'm hearing the ooh, 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 Jeff Jarrett TNA theme. He comes out in his WCW 2000 best. Oh, Tony so Schiavone. good. Now, you, oh. I don't know if you heard on commentary. No. Tony was like, Tony was like the last time I... I saw these guys, like, obviously they wrestled in TNA, but yeah. he's like, the last time I called a match for these guys was in two th in the year 2000, and and he said something like, and boy, was that something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout like, out Fusion Media, R.I.P. Uh, yeah. This match was a lot of fun. I thought they were going to go to the, I thought they were going to go full Tupelo here media. and just break out the plunder. Um, there was a but TNA chant. In, yes, there was. AEW. There was. And, and, and do you know <laughs> the despised TNA? You know, this shows you. We, as a society, have amnesia. There is a great <laughs> oh, show. Oh, yeah. There's a show. There's a bonker show oh, on, yeah. HB, on, on Netflix now called, uh, it's like Ancient Apocalypse, right? <laughs> and it's by this guy, Graham Hancock. He, he He's a journalist that loves, like, this theory about how we're, that humans have amnesia and we don't know about our past. We forgot. Wrestling has amnesia. We forgot. The terribleness of TNA, uh, and yet 13,000 people are chanting uh, TNA when Jeff Jarrett and Sting are in the ring. Not WCW, right, I, but TNA. There are things about TNA that I liked, and there are things that TNA did while I was a podcaster that I put on wax that I did not like. <laughs> but I felt like last night was just a weird generational moment. If it's we had like a if Dixie e Carter run in, I would, have, oh, I would not have Carter believed ran that this in, is happening. Oh, uh, I like it was like if EWR became real life, and I Dixie didn't Carter know how to in, deal. Low with blows it. Darby Allen, and that's how the match ends. Forget about it. Excellent. And he just gets they spray paint TNA. On his they back. spray paint TNA on his back. <laughs> oh God! Pop you know what? That is my fever out. dream. That is a fever dream. But uh, you know what? I had a blast watching this match. Darby looked great. Sting, six almost sixty four years old, looks like a million bucks. Jeff Jarrett, uh, the dude. You know, he stayed around so long, people forgot. And, and now he's in this, again, he's another one. It, it, that that uh, hair, he looks good. He's still throwing the best punch in pro wrestling. I mean, uh, unbelievable. That, 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 that natural yeah. punch is so good. Right, but let's go into the next got, match. Yeah. yeah. We got Jamie a new, Hader. yep. Jamie Hayter, Tony Storm, got a new AEW Women's Interim World Champion. Jamie Hayter, take this quickly. Yeah, Jamie Hayter over like Rover. Wow. It was a really good match. The fans were into it. The fans were into both. I love the misdirections on the finish. They made it seem like Tony was going to win. And then just finding a way with that slam bang crash finish, Jamie Hayter winning was an awesome moment. Great to see the fans getting behind another homegrown Very character cool. and another homegrown persona.
Don't know Very how cool. the title picture is going to play out, but it's really fun. Yeah, and we got the acclaimed and Swerve in Our Glory. The big story here was that Swerve in Our Glory is falling apart. Keith Lee fed yep. up with Swerve's uh, cheating, and he essentially abandoned him, and uh, acclaimed took the win. Now this is go moving into FTR territory. We're going to find out what happens yeah. here. And let's go into the main event, and we're gonna, when we come back from our break, we're going to finish off the show with this. MJF defeated Jon Moxley to win the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Story was Regal turned on Moxley by passing the brass knucks to MJF while you had a double ref bump situation happening. Lays out Mox, one, two, three, MJF, new world champion. Good move? What do you think? Best possible move. Best possible move because... Regal having the protege he never had anywhere else. Danielson's the best wrestler he ever had. Moxie's the best brawler he ever had. Cesaro, best untapped potential. But Max is under 30. Max is He's under 30. He's pliable. Yeah. He's someone at the peak of his pet potential. And having William Regal behind him, being able to sell that story, being able to cultivate the devil and his apprentice... And letting William Regal do William Regal things. We all love William Regal. But when William Regal's at his best is when he is a low down rotten scoundrel. And being able to have that William Regal on TV every week alongside Fantastic. MJF, I can't wait to see what happens. And I can't wait to see what you guys thought of it. Yeah. Because I think that this is going to be one of the finishes that define AEW over the next five years. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live, final few minutes here on the show. I wanted to touch on this a little bit between MJF and John Moxley because, uh, uh, you know, where do you go from here? Who d Does Moxley take a little bit of a backseat here and take some time off? I think it's well-deserved. Yeah. MJF, uh, you know, you, you, you put the value on this dude even more. He's, he's a hot commodity in pro wrestling. The bidding war of 2024, and you... you Storyline wise, you fueled it even more to be competitive because now you have a world champion, MJF. MJF cut a crazy promo in that scrum. You guys could go check it out. But who's his next opponent? You think? Who do you go with? I, I obviously Ethan Page or um, or Ricky Starks. But the next got to be Ricky Starks. You think so? I want it to be Ethan Page, man. Uh, <sighs> Ethan Page makes sense with the firm, but then it's heel versus heel. It's time to make Ricky Starks a main man. Uh, that's cool. Uh, I, I'm into that. Yeah, I, uh, there's, there is no reason why Ricky Starks or Ethan Page should be towards the upper tier of this company. I think it's the best possible. The title eliminator tournament should be a, be a facilitator to create new stars. Yeah. And I don't think on the male side, there has been someone since he's come back from injury. Hell, back to when he won the FTW title from Brian Cage that has had a meteoric rise and just the goodwill of the audience behind them as Ricky Starks. Yeah, very cool. He He's a revelatory guy in that company, and him and Max would have probably a top-tier few just promos alone. Absolutely. Coming up on Dynamite on Wednesday, Ricky Starks, Ethan Page for the finals of the title eliminator. Chris Jericho defends the ROH title against Tomohiro Ishii and Orange Cassidy against Jake Hager for the All-Atlantic Championship. Guys, we are out of time here on Wrestling Observer Live. Matt, thank you for joining me. Everybody, thank, thank you, you for joining me. Sports Byline, thank you for having me. And we'll see you all next time. Take care.